is really bifurcated into two separate uh, spheres. spheres. Uh, there's navigable airspace, and that's controlled by the federal government, by the FAA, and there's uh, airspace below navigable airspace, and that's controlled by the property owner. And that's very important, especially in Miami for development, because generally the uh, navigable airspace is above 500 feet. But that's an average level. It's actually a little bit higher in downtown Miami. But a lot of the projects, as you were aware of, are higher than 500 feet. And by reason of that, you need to go to the FAA to get their approval. Now, they recently. Uh, increased the height to 1,049 feet in, in downtown Miami so that we can get these gigantic projects that are either built now or in the works. One of them is a Param Param pa Panorama Tower, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, that's what it looks like. It's a mixed-use project. It has, uh, in the tower, it has residential. At the, at the base, it has office and it has retail. Another project which hasn't been built yet is Skyrise Miami. That's going all the way up to the limits of the uh, FAA. Um, it's a Jeff Berkowitz project and it's gonna be looking like a gigantic slide at the end of the day. So um, the, the, the corollary to having uh, the property owner own under 500 feet or under 600 feet is that if you want to go, if the government wants to go under that, under the navigable airspace, it needs to buy the right to go under the navigable airspace from the property owner. And we've had this in Broward County. I live in Hollywood. Uh, the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport built a second runway several years ago. and. Uh, they've been in the process for the last two or three years for buying what they call a navigation easement from the property owners. They're going over a residential property now, in, both in takeoff and in landing. And so the prop, they're, in, they're going into private property and they've had to pay very substantial sums to the individual property owners to get that easement to go over their property. Um, one of the primary uses of air rights is to increase density on, on property. So if you have two adjacent lots, one of which is built and one of which is, uh, is, is going to be built, the one that's built, if it has less density than is permitted on that particular property in, accord in accordance with the zoning code, you can move that density to the property next door and build something that might otherwise not be permitted under the zoning law. Also, another way of doing it is there's certain protected properties that have undeveloped air rights, and you can use those properties to take the air rights from those properties and and convert them to a, a larger structure as we, as we have here. And we've done this in Miami. This is Avra John. She's bought some of the Jetson motels on the, what they call the Mimo District in Biscayne Boulevard and the 50s. Uh, these, are, these, for some reason, are protected structures, uh, the most famous of which is the Vagabond Motel. Uh, they call it the Vagabond Hotel now. Th they have density that she has, per she, she has sold to developers who are developing in downtown Miami for many millions of dollars uh, because of uh, the density that she's been able to convey to them. Now, we're gonna talk about some creative uses of airspace. I'm gonna start with New York, because th th it's more creative, but we have plenty of stuff in Miami. So, the first thing is, this is the approach to the George Washington Bridge. I don't know how much you know about the George. It's in northern Manhattan, and this is an old slide, and it's hard to read, but you can see in the bottom portion of the slide, there's a roadway. That roadway is going all the way up to the bridge. On top of the roadway, they built a ramp and, and with a, sitting with a pad on top of it. And that pad houses six different residential buildings. Think of I-95, 
putting some lid on I-95 and building on top of I-95 down here. It, it, it's an interesting thing to, to think about. Of course, you would need the consent of the, of the government, but it, it's, uh, it would give you a lot more developable land than we have left now. This is Park Avenue in New York City. This is a very old slide. Uh, this is, if you look at the left hand corner of the slide, you can see there's, there are railroad tracks. That, is, that was an open, Park Avenue at one point was an open pit. So they built a roadway on top of the open pit and it looks like this now. The railroad is still there, it's still underneath. It, it transports people from Grand Central Station to, to Westchester County, but it doesn't look like it looked originally. This is Grand Central Station. This is the end of, uh, of Park Avenue. This is what it looked like in the 30s, and this is what it looks like now. They built a building on top of Grand Central Station in the early 60s. It was originally called the Pan Am Building. You know what happened to Pan Am. It's called the MetLife Building now. This is the latest project going on in New York City. Now it's called Hudson Yards. It's, it's going up on the west side of Manhattan. Now, if you know anything about Manhattan, it's, it's 10th, between 10th Avenue and 11th Avenue. The, a few years ago, this is what it looked like. It was a pit with a lot of trains coming in from Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And they're in the process of developing it. it when it gets developed, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be 19 million square feet of office and residential. It's gonna be one of the hottest areas in, in Manhattan when it's built out. So we're gonna talk about Miami now. We have Miami Central. That's the Bright Line, the Bright Line train. What, they, what they're doing on the, with, with the tracks that they're building for the Bright Line train, they're building both office and residential buildings on top of the tracks. Um, it's gonna look like something uh, from outer space when, it, when it's finished. 1111 on Lincoln Road, we were working on this project. It's, uh, I don't know if you know that, it, it's a garage um, um, built by famous architects, but one of the levels of the garage is event space. People have had weddings in a garage. And uh, so the, the, one of the elevated pieces of the airspace is being used as event space. Paramount World Center is something I've worked on. Um, uh, it's in downtown Miami in an area that um, the old arena used to be located in. Uh, the Paramount building is going to be a 60-story building. Uh, it's a condominium. And the, the amenities for the condominium are being constructed across a pedestrian way on a building that's not owned by the Paramount owners next across the way. And there's a bridge that you will go from the building to the amenities which you can see much better here. This is a, a, a bird's eye view. If you look at the middle of the chart, there's a beige building, that's the tower. And you can see that there is a bridge across the, it, it starts on I think the sixth or the seventh floor of the um, tower and it takes you to the roof of the building across the pedestrian walkway and that's where all the um, amenities will be. Uh, constructed. They actually are being constructed as we speak. Okay, I want to talk about mixed-use proje projects because they they utilize airspace in in different ways. So, mixed-use projects frequently look like it's just a building. It just looks like any other building. Uh, so. Uh, Panorama Tower, as we discussed before, it, it's just one structure. However, it's broken up into pieces, and those pieces are separate fee parcels that can be created. They're created and can be transferred separately. So you have the tower, which is the residential portion. You have an office portion. You have a retail portion of the of the. So uh, th that's creative uses. So you you you. Cre you you break up a parcel into different pieces. It all looks like one particular parcel, but it really is separate pieces. Uh, I don't know if you've, any of you stayed at the Four Seasons in Miami and Brickell. Okay, that looks like a single building. It really is not. If you looked at the legal descriptions 
of the portions of the building. It, they have seven components in them. There's a condominium residence lot, a hotel, condominium hotel lot, a retail lot, an office lot, a spa lot, a garage lot, a hotel lot. They're all separately owned. All these pieces is owned by separate uh, entities. Um, the, the hotel lot can, is really the skin of the building, the roof of the building, and the hotel piece. All the interior portions, other than the interior hotel, are all owned by separate different owners. So uh, it would look like if you put it on the table and you had the legal descriptions, it would look like a jigsaw puzzle where you're putting the pieces of the puzzle together to make a unified whole. Uh, I think everybody's uh, aware of Brickell City Center. That's the same. They are mi it's a mixed-use project. You see that there are, they use the airspace above the roadways to, for bridges, connecting different pieces of, of the project. And it's the same uh, deal where you have uh, mixed-use, where you have separate pieces in one structure. Uh, this is just for illustrative purposes. So if you had a project that you wanted to build and you had th this type of arrangement where you had apartments, a hotel, a movie theater, a restaurant, and you were thinking of what you needed to think about in terms of how you would, how you would make this kind of a project work, you would need easements. In other words, the, the apartments don't, are, are really not on the ground. You need to get on the ground. The, the same thing with a hotel. You, you, so what are easements? Easements are rights of a property owner to use somebody else's property. So when you have one of these mixed use structures, you're in the middle, you could be in the middle of a building and there are a lot of things that you need to think about if you're either building one of these projects or you're representing somebody who's buying a piece of one of these projects. Parking. So uh, in the slide we had before, uh, you're, the, you're the apartment building, where are you gonna park? You're not gonna park in the movie theater. So you, most of the buildings have parking that, uh, as the Four Seasons does, and that parking structure is a separate ownership. So you need to make sure that you have arrangements with the owner of the parking garage that you can actually park cars there. Where, where do you, what do you do with the trash? You, if you're in the middle of a building, you can't, you're not gonna accumulate trash in the middle of the building. You need to have an easement on the ground in order to put a trash receptacle. The same thing with loading and unloading. You need a loading dock if you're moving people in or out or moving furniture in or out. So you need to make sure that you get an easement on the ground in order to put in a loading dock. Same thing about utilities, it's another thing. If you're in the middle of a building, or you have your own utility lines or do you share utility lines with somebody else? How, how are the costs allocated? Do you have s s meters or sub-meter? Same thing with the HVAC. Um, how, how, you, how do you do, so if you're putting one of these projects together, you, you have to think of these things as, how is, it going, how is the building as a whole going to work? Same thing with security services, telecommunications. If you need a satellite dish and you're in the middle of the building, you need to get roof rights in order to put a satellite dish on the roof. If, you're, if you have cable that's coming in, for, uh, it's coming in from the ground, you need to get easements to put cable in. Uh, same thing about life safety. Is it one system or do you have individual systems? If you have a hotel, and you need signage, do you want it on the ground floor or on the top? And if it's, if it's not in your unit, then you need to make a deal with, uh, you have to make sure you have a deal with the, the, the entity that owns the portion of the property that you're putting signage in. And management. So for many, many years, when we started to do these mixed use projects, there was a tax problem involved because the Miami-Dade Tax Assessor's Office decided that if you have an air rights parcel, you don't get a separate tax folio number. So the famous case is the Four Seasons. The Four Seasons, I said they have seven components. 
Two of the components are condominiums. The, the condominiums by, required by law to get separate folio numbers. So, but the five elements that are not condominiums share a single tax folio number. So what happens if one of the, one of the parcels doesn't pay their portion or share of the taxes? How do you finance that? How do you get some lender to finance it? How do you sell something when you, you could be at the mercy of some other owner? Well, that problem, we've been working on that problem since 2014, and I'm happy to tell you that we just got it uh, in the last legislative session in 2018. There was a statute that was adopted by the legislature, which is now will we require the tax appraisers office to grant separate folio numbers for tax for, for, for air rights parcels. So that problem, after studying next year, that problem should go away.